Retirement plans can be complicated and you really need a good team to support you. And that's gonna be kind of the motto as we go through all of this is that everything that we do relies on the team. Um, no one person doing it alone is going to have all the answers, but it's important to know who to go to for the right information. And so as we go through this, you, you, know, you can take some notes. There'll be time at the end for questions. Um, you'll see that as the pre presentation goes on, it'll kind of list out the roles and the responsibilities of each part of the team. And I'll read through some of it, excuse me, some of it, but some of it we'll just kind of go over and come back to. Um, once we get to the end, if, you know, as I said, if you have questions, you know, we can, can go back and, and kind of review from there. So we'll go ahead and get started. And so the first thing that I wanna talk about are the people that are on your team. And from that, from that aspect, we're gonna talk about first you as the plan sponsor, us as the TPA, the financial advisor and your record keeper. And this is your team when you're working on your plan and when it comes to the time to be setting your plan up. Um, initially, your financial advisor may have come to you about a plan, you may have gone to them, you may have heard something on TV, maybe you got something in the mail. Um, but when it comes down to it is that you're going to want to collaborate at least with another individual, another group of individuals um, when it comes to consulting and setting up your plan design. If you don't have a good starting point, the plan can be a thorn in your side and that's why we're all here. Good plan design is critical. Retirement plans are not a one size fits all commodity. Each must be tailored to fit the entity being served. Uh, a good case in point would be a plan that's des designed for us at Definity is not going to work for a corporation like McDonald's. Um, it's not gonna work for a construction company. And that's because the plan sponsor has a different idea of what they wanna provide for their employees and for themselves. And that's why it's important that you just kind of don't take what's given to you um, off the shelf. And I say off the shelf, I believe at one point I was in a Costco or a Sam's Club when we lived in Alaska and they actually had a 401k plan you could buy off the shelf. And to me, that was kind of shocking. Um, when you're setting up your plan design initially, you're going to work with all of the individuals listed here. Um, as a plan sponsor, you are ultimately in control of the plan as to what gets accepted and what doesn't. Us as the TPA, we're going to prepare the plan document and provide that to you. We're also gonna prepare the plan summary description. Um, you are going to be the one that executes the plan document. Neither our office or your financial advisor is really the one that executes anything. The power is all with you as the plan sponsor. We don't have the authority to adopt a document on your behalf. Um, there are some things depending on what kind of services you may pick up later. As Tom mentioned, 316, um, where we become a larger player in your plan. But initially, um, and for the most part, you as a plan sponsor are, are going to handle the decision-making process. Um, you're gonna base it on the guidance provided by us as a TPA and as your financial advisor. Um, your, your financial advisor is going to help you select the investments for your plan. And they're also going to conduct your enrollment meetings. Um, if you're not working with a plan uh, financial advisor, uh, we would advise that you find somebody that you trust. It doesn't have to be somebody that meets with you every six months. It doesn't have to be somebody that calls you every week, but somebody that will help you set your plan up and make sure that you have it set with the proper investments and the, the enrollment meetings for your participants. They will have questions as will you. Once your plan has been set up, you're going to move into the plan administration process. And this is an ongoing process. It's you know your day-to-day. -day. You as the plan sponsor, you're going to remit the payroll contributions. Your record keeper and your TPA do not have access to your, your payroll information. Um, you, you are going to have to do that. If you don't want to, there are options. Um, some payroll companies can automatically submit information to say a John Hancock or a principal or or things like that. Maybe you have a outsourced you know, HR company that you're using that they're submitting stuff, but that is ultimately a decision on your side and that something that you're responsible for. You will also determine the eligibility um, for your employees and notify them when they've become eligible. 
Again, us as a TPA or as your record keeper is not necessarily going to have all that information. You are the holder of the data at its most relevant point. And what that means is that unless you have shared all that information on a timely basis with everybody else on the team, they can't serve you the way you need to be served. During the administration process at the end of the year, your TPA is going to ask for year-end census data and employee questionnaire responses. This information is key in getting you the right compliance testing, helping you prepare your 5500, providing the information to your participants as far as their vesting. Um, without that information, all of those pieces and that required compliance testing can't occur. As a TPA, we're going to help make sure that the key employees are properly identified and that the HCEs, your highly compensated employees, are also properly identified. We will base those determinations based on the data that you have provided to us. We're going to review participant allocations compared to what your payroll system has said should have happened and what your record keeper actually received and did happen. Mistakes do happen. I have never worked with a perfect plan. I don't think that they exist. We're all human. Um, errors do, do occur. The most important thing is to um, do what you can to prevent them and address them as soon as possible. We're also going to process your annual employer contributions and perform all of the required non-discrimination testing. All contributions to the plan have to be tested, whether they are deferrals, safe harbor, if they are an employer match and employer profit sharing. Um, this happens every year. Even if you use a plan that gets a free pass, such as a safe harbor, it still has to be reviewed and the information still has to be provided to make sure that all of the contributions are being made in accordance with the plan document. We're also going to look at what makes a plan top heavy and help you determine that status. We're going to calculate vesting so that you know how much of the employer money belongs to the employee and how much of it is forfeited should they leave before the schedule has been met. Additionally, we also determine your audit status and provide aid to an auditor as necessary. It's important to note that your TPA is typically not the auditor. If your plan is large enough that requires an audit, this has to be done by a, an outside CPA firm. Your record keeper is also going to allocate contributions to the participants' accounts. They're gonna track and monitor your plan and participant allocations, such as a change to a request for 5% instead of 3%, or um, maybe they want to change their investments. That's all gonna happen on the record keeper side. For the majority of this presentation and, and for discussion purposes, when we're talking about a record keeper, we're talking about a vendor such as a John Hancock or an American Funds. Um, plans can and do um, use brokerage accounts, um, but those are a little bit of a different uh, type of animal when it comes to some additional work that's required when it comes to the administration of your plan. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. Your record keeper is also your day-to-day -day support for your plan participants. Participants have questions about their accounts, especially in the last year, year and a half, um, you know, where is my money? What's happening to it? And so you want to make sure that that information for the record keeper is always provided to your participants so that they can be comfortable and confident with what they have um, for retirement. The record keeper also will have ongoing enrollment and education support. Some vendors are very good and their websites are built to help the participants determine if they're doing everything that they can to set them best up for retirement. Um, such as you know, tools based on their compensation and their age and what they wanna do at retirement. Um, so those are things that would be handled then by the record keeper. Um, you'll notice that throughout, there are some areas where we have asterisks and, and such on what these responsibilities are. And those are shared responsibilities. Um, depending on what kind of services you select with a record keeper, they may be able to calculate the vesting uh, versus our organization. And again, that is going to be reliant on the data. If we get the data at the end of the year only one time, we are only able to update our vesting one time a year. If on the other hand, you're providing data to a record keeper every week or every other week, once a month with every payroll, they're going to be able to 
um, calculate vesting and give that information to a participant in a more real-time basis. Typically, the financial advisor is not involved in the administration of the plan on a day-to-day -day basis, but that doesn't mean that they can't be. Some financial advisors like to be more hands-on and involved when it comes to processing and administration and fielding participant questions. And that is a choice um, that every financial advisor makes as well as you as a plan sponsor. Maybe you need more of that support, maybe you don't want that kind of support. Plan conversions. Uh, plan conversions are something that happen for a variety of reasons. And you might be thinking, well, I just started this plan. I don't even need to worry about a plan conversion. But at some point, the chances of your plan going through a conversion of some sort are probably pretty high. And they happen for a variety of reasons. Maybe you change financial advisors. Maybe you didn't have a financial advisor and now you are um, going to add one. And that financial advisor you know, has some other suggestions. Um, maybe you have seen something on TV uh, that says that there are better investment options or services if you move your money here, or, or maybe you, you know, want to go with an alternative. Maybe you're using brokerage accounts um, and you don't want to do that anymore. It's become too cost prohibitive. Maybe you're at a record keeper and your plan is much smaller. Maybe you want to move to a brokerage account. You might also make a choice to change your TPA or you may have changes in your company ownership. And I think lately this has been a, a big change um, or more frequent, and that is companies are selling or buying, um, company owners are retiring or getting out of the business, and you just may need to change and convert your plan. So when your plan goes through a conversion, it's really important that you as a plan sponsor have historical data, both from where you're coming from and being able to provide it to where you're going to. So for example, say you were currently not working with a TPA and now you're choosing to work with a TPA. Um, we're gonna need historical data in the form of census information in order for us to make sure that what we're getting uh, is accurate. If your money is coming from a brokerage account into a record keeper, we're gonna need to know how much money belongs to each person so that we can coordinate all of the transfers of, of the assets. Um, you're also gonna to wanna to make sure that when you're coordinating everything that everyone has been notified and ensure that your plan is in compliance with the, the ERISA code and the IRS. And what that means is that anytime a participant is gonna be unable to access their account for a period of time, they have to be provided with notices. And so that is one of the big things that timing plays an important role in both the administration and the notification. Another item or a final item at least to point out would be that anytime there is a potential for changes in company ownership, you always want to make sure that you have addressed any potential issues with the retirement plan prior to signing on the dotted line. Um, if you're purchasing a company, you want to consider do they have a retirement plan? How are you purchasing them? That's where you know your TPA, your financial advisor can come in you know, and, and help and make sure that you don't inadvertently take on um, a troublesome plan or that the participants don't know what's going on with their money. Reporting and disclosures. This time of year is a huge time for reporting and disclosures. As Tom mentioned, we just finished up the October 15th um, filing deadline for the majority of our plans. And that's a really busy time. Just in general, for getting the filing out, the filing is usually due a little bit earlier, July 31st. Um, but once that's done, there are a lot of items that need to go out to your plan participants. Participants need to know about the fees that they may um, be charged through their plan accounts. They need to make sure that they're notified of their vesting information. Um, you as the plan sponsor are required to provide a summary annual report to all of your participants. The summary annual report summarizes the 5,500. As the TPA, we help prepare that um, and provide it to you based on the information that you have provided to us. So again, it goes back to you as a plan sponsor providing data going forward so that the other items can be prepared as required. Um, one item that is important to note, and you'll see that the record keeper uh, list over here is a little bit longer. And online access 
in enrollment are critical at the record keeper. And in general, plan sponsors generally don't load all of their employees to the record keeper. So say you have 10 employees, but only five of them participate. Maybe you're only sending information for five people to that record keeper. What you're missing out on are some of the services that are provided by your record keeper that now become requirements that you have to cover. For example, fee disclosure. A fee disclosure has to go to every participant. And the IRS eyes, eyes participants as any active employee who is eligible to participate, regardless of any election to do so, plus any terminated participant with an account balance. So what does that mean? What that means is that if you have 10 employees and eight of them are eligible, but only five of them are participating and your record keeper only knows about five, you are responsible for making sure that the other three are getting the same information. If your record keeper has all of those individuals, you've submitted all their information, even if they're not participating, then the record keeper can provide their notices directly to the plan participants. And I'm just double checking here. This count for your participant notices is also really important when it comes to your audit status. And so as I mentioned, who the IRS considers a participant. When it comes to an audit count, and an audit um, generally is plans that have over 120 participants. Those same people, whether participating or not, as long as they are eligible and still employed would be counted. And so that means if you have 150 people and only 30 of them are participating, but 120 of them are eligible, your plan still would require an audit. And that is why it's really important that you keep the data updated both at the record keeper and at the TPA. So that comes back into play as I said in the beginning, when at the end of the year, we're requesting census information and that you as the plan sponsor are the keeper of the data and you have it at its most relevant point. We don't know and your record keeper doesn't know what we don't know. So you as a plan sponsor are still in control of all of that information. Ongoing consulting. Change is inevitable, and I think 2020 and 2021 have shown this um, without fail, probably more times than any of us would ever care to. Um, so each year there is ongoing consulting. You have questions, something's not working. What happened last year? When you're going through the consulting process, are you having testing issues? Did you fail the AT ADP test? Um, do you have a low participation rate? Would you like to make larger contributions to your plan? Anytime there are changes that are likely to be implemented, the plan should be reviewed to avoid unintended consequences. Um, what, what works for somebody down the road may not work for your organization. And I know one of the key things that is uh, talked about right now is after tax contributions. Can we add more money to the plan um, or let our employees add more money to the plan? And the short answer is yes. The longer answer is it depends. How will that affect your plan? You want to make sure that before any changes are implemented that it's reviewed to avoid any un unintended consequences. When there's a change that is required, your TPA is going to consult with your financial advisor and with you to discuss what you're trying to accomplish. Is what you're looking for something that can be accomplished within the plan? Do you need a second plan of a different type? Do you need to change eligibility? Um, so those are conversations that we all have together. Once the decision has been made on a change one way or the other, the plan document has to be updated. As a TPA, we, we would prepare your amendment. As a plan sponsor, you would be responsible for executing that plan amendment. Again, we don't sign. Um, your financial advisor doesn't sign. Your record keeper doesn't sign. Um, all of that comes, comes to you to sign. And when you get those types of amendments and changes, it can be confusing. I know that a lot of um, plan documents and restatements and such have gone out at this time and 
the email and the information, when you look at it, it can be overwhelming. Um, so that is one of the reasons that, you know, you would employ a TPA, you would employ your financial advisor, they're going to work with you to help you make sure you understand exactly what you're doing, um, what best suits you and where to go from there. <clears throat> Excuse me. The TPA is also going to help you address any concerns that I mentioned before about mergers and acquisitions. Um, you know, do you want to take on that plan? Do you want to keep separate plans? Where do you go from here? Um, it can be confusing. And again, it can be overwhelming. And that's one of the most important things is that you ask questions. Distributions and loans. And I think this has also been something that has come up quite a bit more in the last year, year and a half. The IRS had frequently changed um, restrictions and requirements and was very lenient into what was gonna be available for loans and distributions and what plan, plan sponsors could choose to do and what plan sponsors have to do. Again, we'll go back to the main point. You as the plan sponsor are the keeper of the data. And that means when it comes to distributions and loans, in the best interest of the plan and your participants, the medium for, for participant requests should really come from you. If a participant needs a form, they should come to you for direction as to where it's available for, from. Is it a paper form that you have on, on hand? Is it something that they should get from the record keeper? Is it something they should be directed to do online? And the reason that this comes up that the participants should come through you is that you know them. You know if Sally is truly terminated. You know if Bob needed the, the hardship distribution that came through. You don't know, I should say we don't always know and aren't able to verify that the person that we're speaking to or the email that we're receiving is coming from the actual participant. Yes, we have access to their accounts online. They can give us their date of birth. They can give us their social security number. Um, but security and identity theft are rampant. And I know that that will be talked about later this week. Um, and you knowing your workforce better than anybody else is best controlled to have you provide the information as to where they can get their distributions or directing them to the record keeper online where the, the online record keeper can send them a text message and ask for the verification code as annoying or cumbersome as it seems, it's in the best interest of everybody um, to make sure that that is as, as locked down as possible. Um, you also want to eliminate the telephone game. And, and I know I've, I've talked to a lot of participants when I, I'm working where they'll get my direct phone number. And um, one of the biggest things that when I'm talking with somebody is I hate to tell them I don't know and hang up on them. And in fact, I won't. And I'll probably spend more time doing something that I didn't need to or, or was a better way um, you know, to get them to a record keeper to try to find somebody to help them. Um, you want to eliminate the telephone game. So if when you're setting up your plan, you set up a good policy or procedures as to how this would function or where information is going to be found, that will eliminate the telephone game. It'll, it gets information faster and in a more consistent manner to your participants, and it gets them what they're needing um, sooner rather than later. We're still going to be involved on a regular basis when it comes to calculating investing benefits, getting items reviewed and making sure the requests meet the requirements of your plan document. Um, but in the end, as a plan sponsor, you also have to authorize all your plan loans and distributions. We review them, but you approve them. Um, the same for the record keeper. If a participant sends a form directly to a record keeper, uh, the record keeper can't approve that without you having approved that. So uh, again, the, the data is key and the authorization um, lies with the plan sponsor. The last set of information that I have on here is just some important plan year end dates. Um, the dates in red are shown to be based on calendar year dates. As I mentioned uh, earlier, on the right-hand side right now, we're in the process, you'll see the December 1 deadlines for fee disclosure. Um, if there are investment changes that are being made, safe harbor notices, auto enrollment notices, 
um, things like that, it's this time of year, that is something that falls under the reporting and disclosure requirements. And those are items that you're required to give to your plan participants. If you haven't already received some things from our office, you should be expecting them probably in the next couple of weeks, especially if your plan is a safe harbor or has auto enrollment. Um, fee disclosure items typically come from your vendors. And that information, as I mentioned, can be distributed directly to participants if the vendor knows about them. So that is another reason why you wanna make sure that your data is being loaded to your vendors, even if a participant is not choosing to participate. So um, with that, I'm going to go to the last slide and I'm gonna to try to look and see if there are any questions. Um, I, from what I see, is that there aren't really a lot of questions. Um, I am going to jump over and share a separate screen here. And this is the Definity webpage. And on here, um, there's a lot of information and I would encourage you to look at it. But one of the big things that I think would be helpful to any plan sponsor is for you to go out underneath the resources and look for this recent post. And it is entitled Retirement Plan Terms to Know. And just double checking and making sure that you're, you're able to see what I have. Retirement Plan Terms to Know. There's so many things that get tossed around um, ADP test. Um, top heavy, key employee, HCE. Um, this information is in here. I, I kind of wish this had been something that I had known about years and years ago when I first started. Um, it is a good resource to you. There's a lot of things on here um, that I think you would find helpful. Um, and to that end, I'm gonna conclude my presentation. Um, I hope that you find that your plan, while it may seem to be overwhelming at times, is something that doesn't have to be. And that as a team, we're all here to support you and to help your plan be what you want it to be um, for you and your participants.